So I always want to go to Sioux City, Iowa, personally, but we'll get there one day. Because <laughs> the airport is SUX. Life sucks. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, w- welcome back. Uh, we were talking about the publishing aspect of, of making the immersion. I know for me, I've kind of dabbled with vanity presses. I, I dabbled with the, the, the friend in the basement. And now my last book is on the Amazon trail. What was your publishing experience like? Well... It took so long to actually write the thing that I tried a number of different times. So like in 2010, I tried putting a couple of couple of uh, feelers out there at publishers, but they weren't going to touch. And, and I didn't share this with you before, but my first draft was 170,000 words. What? Yeah. <laughs> Tolkien style is right there. Yeah, I ended up with 80,000 words. So I had some really good uh, feedback from beta readers and stuff along the way. And, and yeah. I was just able to... And, cut out a, a second half of the book really well, but, most first time writers have the opposite problem usually they're like twenty thousand words you go oh it's a novel and it's not but you're saying yeah. you wrote basically like the, the the middle earth saga yeah basically what i learned back then when i was you know just staggering trying to figure out what the hell it was going to do is i was just trying to figure out uh what i figured out sorry was that nobody's gonna give a debut novelist one hundred seventy thousand words to tell the story right so i kind of as i said before you know i got six years kind of what the hell am I going to do with this? I kind of put it in the proverbial uh, drawer, came back to it, made the, made the drastic cuts to it and it started to get mean and lean and, and, and started thinking, okay, well, this has got a chance because of all the other things, the layers that I added to the story and and, and things like that. I was like, this is, this is really, really fucking good. So, um, you know, and then, you know, same story though. You put, I put my stuff out there, um, a bunch more rejections. I even tried the, the more traditional route of like, hey, I've got to get my name known. So I got to write short stories to do this. Um, right. But, you know, I, I think I've written a couple good ones, but I haven't gotten anything like, I haven't gotten the nod from anybody. So I was like, that's just wasting my time. I've still got this story that I got to get put out and, and it's urgent right now for me to do this. Right. So um, this is a lot of backstory. Sorry. But, um, so what I did when I figured, man, I think I'm going to have to get try to promote my book a different way and, and how many words and synopsis of the story. And I, right. even made some, I even made some really embarrassing promo videos, like two minutes long. And <laughs> I, I ended up taking that down because I was kind of embarrassed of it. At the were end. you in the video? It was like one of those like book trailer things where like, like flying clip art. Or no, I didn't go like... that far. Okay. I didn't go that far. Um, Book trailers are so weird to me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it was really weird. But what I did was I went back to the scene of the, the main scene of the book in downtown San Jose and did some shooting there, which was you know a cool concept. And I that was a hoop that I wanted to jump jump through. But I, sure. in, the end, in the end, I was like, I'm not I'm not a movie guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not for this <laughs> I can see but, you cringing from over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad I took it down because nobody can now look it up. Um, yeah. But I ended up raising enough money to hire editors finally so i had my wife has read the books like seven times right she's amazing and you know balancing that with all she, all she does but you know i need some somebody else a little less biased so sure. um you know i hired uh, a, a, an editor um who helped me deal with some some issues in terms of the content the story and things like that asked a lot of really hard questions yeah. Uh, so I, so I plunked down a bunch of that bunch of my money from that fundraising campaign uh, to get that done. Did a bunch of rewrites and then hired another uh, editor, a copy editor this time. Uh, and you know she was helping with the flow of the story, uh, making sure that there were. And this is kind of funny because there's you know, Cat is the kind of storyteller that she is. She she doesn't always tell the truth. Right. So right. Um, you know she was just trying to keep me consistent with certain elements or, or details in my story because there's an interplay of fiction and um, right you know history in my book so she's like well this didn't really happen at this point and you got to be careful of this and oh didn't and then the whole timeline for my character she did a really meticulous job of keeping track of that stuff because i lost track of it right because there's because there's just so much going on yeah. so that was hugely helpful um and and she had a she they both had a really good track record um but the, the the copy editor has has some pretty good bona fides in her in her um, repertoire. So yeah. she she has uh, copy edited some pretty famous people. So I was, I was pretty cool. It was, I, I was well worth the money. Yeah. But um, then all of a sudden I'm like I don't have a lot of money to go and 
like, what do I do next? So I try, try to get the book published, you know, the regular traditional way. I was like, shit, mm -hmm. it's, not ha it's not happening again. And I got to, I have to move on with my life. I've got to get a publisher. And so I, I started, um, I raised some more money. Um, not in nefarious ways, but in different ways. <laughs> right. Um, Crypto? What the? <laughs> no, no. Um, um, I, I, I sold some plasma, you know. Okay. You know, yeah. so, and, and, you know, and that's the easiest money you can make out there, except for, you know, sometimes it takes a while, but still. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was just so, I was like, whatever it takes, you know, I was work, working a couple jobs and doing, doing a bunch of other things like that. So then I raised, had finally raised enough money. Um, and then, you know, the other things and like so i had yeah. enough money and then i went back to one of the uh publishers that was that had showed interest in my publishizer campaign and i said so you want to do this and so what what it ended up being was a hybrid deal and what that means is i got to plunk down my money up front and then they take care of a lot of that hard stuff that we were talking about earlier um which is getting the book distributed right uh, making sure that ingram uh, has all the information that they need to do what they do. Right. Uh, making sure that um, the prices are set the way that they're supposed to be set. Getting your, you know, something as as seemingly mundane as an ISBN number. You know, all those all those kind of like infrastructure type of things. Mm -hmm. They helped with that. I mean, I had to do all my website work. Um, I basically have to do all my promotional stuff, which I'm fine with. I'm totally stoked about, you know, talking about this book till I'm blue in the face. I don't, I don't even care because I love it, <laughs> but it would be nice to have a little bit of representation. So, you know, um, that, that's probably the, the downside to it because they do kind of give you that infrastructure, but there's a lot of that you're, you have to learn as you go. And so right. I think it's a good for a first time writer who wants to get that first book out there and if they have enough money to do that. Um, and, and, and that can be a struggle. It was for me, uh, yeah. you know, but, you know, but I want, I want more people to kind of, I think that's the route that a lot of people are going because there are a lot of different ways to tell stories now that may, maybe won't get in front of a, a big publisher, but these stories are, are meant to be told. The one that, the one that, that comes to my mind is um, who's the guy, uh, Andy Weir, who wrote uh, The Martian. Yeah, self, yeah, self-published, and can you imagine what that dude's making in royalties right now? Holy yeah, crap. exactly. You own your entire <laughs> things uh, w without getting into specific dollar amounts. Uh, I have a question about the self-publishing thing on a financial standpoint because I learned this from comic book writing that writers are a dime a dozen in the grand scheme of things, and it really comes down to having your idea and push it to the finish line. Do you keep a dollar amount in your head about what would be considered a successful book? Or is it really the journey of just like releasing it? Like, oh, I did it. Woo. Or you're like, no, 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 no. It has to recoup this times 1.5, this times two. I think that there's different, uh, there are diff every, it's different for everybody because mm -hmm. I, um, at my current regular job, um, I know I came across somebody who writes genre fiction and they're all about making the money they made no bones about it i talk with them and they're like i write to make money and i'm like right good for you that's not me <laughs> yeah. um uh but you know i think i alluded to this earlier it's like at some point it would be nice to get a little bit of money back for that sure, but sure, sure. um it's just like i've, I've gotten some uh, some feedback on this book and and it's been pretty good and mm -hmm. i'm really pleased with that i'm hoping for a wider acceptance of the story and its quality. Um, but, you know, the, the feedback that I've gotten that has been positive has just been like really, really uh, worth it all to me, yeah. you know? Um, and, you know, maybe, and, and there are books out there in the history of publishing that took a long time to get their, get their foothold in, re in readership. You know, I think that, um, Paulo Coelho is, is one of those guys who I think had his book written and done for like 10 years and it didn't get noticed until it went huge, like what, 10 years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so like, he must've been like, well, now it happens. Like, <laughs> I was hungry then. What's going yeah, on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we had talked about this before, um, about my own author, my own author, my own author life. Um, because there was a part of me that was just frustrated with the process of, I have an idea, I wrote the book, how do I get it out there distributed? My penultimate book, the next to last book, didn't do well at all, and I was done. 
not because I didn't want to write anymore, because because I didn't, couldn't afford the best editor. I couldn't have the best timeline. I thought, you know what? I'm going to do one more book and then just say I wrapped it up. And that one, my, my latest one, Graduation Day, became my most successful commercially. So the question I have for you is, if the immersion, for whatever reason, does not meet your expectations as far as acceptance, does this world get shelved for a new world? Do you keep writing? Do you take a hiatus? Have you thought about that? Do champions not even think about losing? <laughs> What's going through your mind? I am not thinking about losing. So I guess that makes <laughs> I guess that makes me a champion, right? <laughs> um, I have three more outlines ready to go, man. I've I've started drafting a novella already. Um, I think it's kind of you know it's it's dark, but it's got a little bit more satire in it, um, and it's. You know, it's kind of in this just uh, dy semi dystopian. It's all this genre stuff that I really have, have not read super deeply into until recently, yeah. um, and it, it does interest me given our given our current state of the world. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that satire is, is is something that will be hard for me to do. So I have that. I've got um, a couple other. I got one spinoff from The Emergent that I want to do. It's more of a historical fiction type of thing based on one of the characters in the book. Um, I'm really hoping, and quite honestly, I, the whole objective of, of The Emergent right now is not for me to necessarily make the money, but um, I'm really interested to see, hopefully, I really want people to take up certain characters and run with them and see what they do with them, you know? Yeah. Like I'm choosing one character in the book that I feel that I could write really easily, fairly easily. I've never done historical fiction, but I have a I have a structure in mind. I have an idea of it's the you know the grandpa from the story. But there are so many other characters that I want to see what happens. But I don't want to. I don't think I want to write those stories anymore. I want other people to write them, and I don't want anything to do with. I mean, if they want feedback on it, cool. But I don't want any monetary bits of it I, I i just want to see the world grow in in terms and it's kind of like i guess it's what you would call it fan fiction but it's 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 more i don't know fan yeah. fiction always makes me think of star wars and stuff which i'm not knocking star wars but yeah yeah you know they're they're um more of a literary nature of of fan fiction i guess but i, I gotcha because the, the yeah. fanfic is a whole thing entirely so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and i don't know know enough about it but what i'm, I'm just really hoping that's that people will take up the mantle of some of these characters that that are semi-developed for a reason you know like i just yeah. left them, i left them where they were at because they served their purpose in the book but man they've got a whole second life to live so when you have someone who may be listening and and they have their their manuscript ready to go, do you recommend the the, the full on publishing? Do you recommend hybrid publishing? Do you just say find what works for them? What, what's your insight there? Uh, I think that publishing is a lot like anything like you might you might know living there in L.A. You know, it's just a, a lot of it's about who you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of writers, but none of them are like big and famous but they're good writers. So I've gotten some good endorsements for my book, which is kind of cool. Nice. Um, but I really believe it's, it's got to do with your, um, with your own, whatever your personal situation is. I had a friend from grad school who had a bunch of writing is getting, I mean, he's 10, 15 years older than me. And it was like getting to a certain stage in his life. It's like, I just want to see this stuff in print. So we had an inheritance, a little bit of an inheritance, and you know, he just plunked down some money and did did the vanity press like you like you were talking about. But right. um, you know, I, I liked the middle ground that I took this time is really cool. Um, the other thing is there's kind of an incentive with this publisher is if I hit 2,500 uh, copies mm -hmm. in sales, both ebook and in uh, in print, then they'll give me a a, a, a traditional deal. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it is cool. It is cool. It's a lot of hard work though, because twenty five hundred. That's a lot of damn books, man. Oh yeah, it, it's like it isn't, but it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. yeah, seven billion people, no problem. Oh wait, yeah. big problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like like yeah. Stephen King sells that much, and in the first hour that a book gets released, right? So right, exactly. Well, if anything I can do to help out with that, man, let me know. I mean, but the this... traditional to to kind of finish up the answer to your question, I just wanted to say that the traditional method, um, I've definitely tried that. Uh, it's it takes a lot of patience. Um, I think that there are certain things that you can do, and I, I was still de developing as a writer, honestly. You know, so it's I mean these. 
publishers and the agents probably turned me down for a reason, right? I mean, there's probably several reasons. One of them wrote to me and said, you know, the, the publishing industry is fickle. So they may like something one minute and then the next minute, like, I mean, we don't want to hear about post-apocalyptic zombies anymore, for example, you know, like, right. um, so, you know, that it, it's hard to deal with that, the fickle nature of the, of the publishing industry. And that's kind of the advantage of kind of doing it your own ways because you don't, you're not beholden to anybody or any large corporation. You just do what the hell you want and come what may. Right. Just roll the dice, which is the very core to your eye. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for your time and, and really coming back and, and give us more insight about the publishing process. I know that's where a lot of uh, emerging authors get hung up. So I thank you for that. Yeah, anytime. And i um, happy to come back and talk. Maybe we have like a, a little Patreon where people who only read the book. Yeah, you know. exactly. We'll put the links in the description below to make sure you buy your own copy of The Emergent. Available now, we're going to get your finest books. <laughs> yep. There it is. <laughs> local bookstores too, 